Hey guys and welcome to today's watercolor and oil painting tutorial video. In today's video I show you how I created my newest painting titled Love Spell featuring the beautiful Larina Meiner from St. Petersburg. I found her profile on Instagram and I asked her if I could paint one of her beautiful photos. Lucky for me she agreed and I could make this portrait of her. Link to her profile is in the video description. Before we start hit that subscribe button so that you can never ever miss a new art video from me again. The painting is my entry for this month's Bad Apple Artist Collective auction, beginning next week on Thursday, September 27th and ending on Sunday, September 30th. The auction takes place on the Facebook page of the Bad Apple Artist Collective. If you are interested in purchasing this original oil and watercolor painting, next week is your chance. I will leave you a link to the auction page in the description. A limited edition of only 50 finer prints of Love Spell is a Available in my online shop too. Link to that and to all the materials that I used for this painting are in the description as well. Also, if you are serious about learning how to use watercolor or oils professionally, you should check out my huge collection of painting lessons over on Patreon. For more painting tutorials, head over to my Patreon page at patreon.com slash and select the 5 or $10 reward tier. You get access to over 50 painting videos. For $10 per month, you get exclusive access to my live stream and real-time painting videos. For $15 or more, you get beautiful art surprises, fine art prints, original watercolor illustrations and much more. Don't miss out on improving your skills and learn new techniques. Now, let's start. Before I begin painting, I created a mock-up in Photoshop based on the photography of Larina. The theme of the auction is witches versus spirits. And when I saw the photo of Larina, I immediately thought of a mysterious, romantic, yet modern witch with tattoos and pink hair. So in order to make my composition more witch-like, I added an old witchy cottage in my picture and for the romantic mood I included flowers and moth. Then after I finished my Photoshop composition, I printed it out and traced it onto a large sheet of Fabriano hot pressed watercolor paper. I started painting in the top left corner because I often tend to smudge wet color with my iron over my painting. In order to avoid that, as a right-handed person, I start left and continue to the right and the bottom of the painting. I started pretty loose and rough for this painting because I knew I would have to paint over a lot of areas with oil paints anyways. My decision to use oils on top of watercolor and also painting on paper is based on the size and the subject. My painting subject is highly detailed. They are the tattoos, the various objects in the background like moths and flowers and the relatively small size of the subject. Everything of that require me to paint very fine. I also wished to render these details accurate and on canvas that would be very very difficult, at least for me. Paper and board allow for more detailed work. The tattoo for example I completely rendered with watercolors as well as the background and since I can't paint with watercolors on regular gesso or wooden board, for me paper was the best choice for this subject. I filled in the upper part of the painting, the hair and the little cottage and tried to implement already important details like the geometric shapes of the roof and windows of the cottage. Then I continued with the remaining parts of the background and applied greens, browns and black while letting the paint bleed into itself. This way it creates pretty shapes that fit well to landscape painting. I applied a second layer for the tree skyline that I placed on top of the blue sky. Painting trees with watercolors is surprisingly easy. I then filled in the first layer of skin on the figure, added a couple of hair strands and painted the first layer on the flowers. In this phase I didn't pay attention to the color values that much. Watercolor always dries much lighter, so in order to get very dark, I have to apply more layers and use more pigment. Then I continued with adding details to the moth and the peony and let my painting dry.
Then, after these layers had dried, I started painting the tattoo. Because I had traced my reference onto the paper, it was fairly simple to paint the tattoo. I did compare it to the reference the whole time though, because I couldn't always identify what the individual tattoo details depicted. I made sure to use a small detail brush in order to be able to render everything I saw in my reference. Before I could paint with oils on my painting, I needed to protect the watercolors first. For that I use spray fixative from Schmenke. I apply at least 5 thin layers to make sure that everything is almost completely water resistant. As an alternative you can also use pastel fixative. Then I applied two layers of transparent acrylic binder. I personally recommend matte medium from Golden, but you can use any transparent acrylic binder that is sold as a primer for painting too. Normally you can find a detailed description of the packaging of the primer about the possible ways of using it, so make sure to read before you apply it onto your watercolor painting. After my primer had dried, I could finally start painting with oils. I started with the portrait portion of the painting, which was definitely the most difficult part of the painting process for me. I started applying a transparent layer with Liquid Original, Burnt Sienna and Olive Green in the shadow areas of the face. Then I applied a semi-opaque layer of a lighter shade to the midtones, still not fully opaque, before I painted in the highlights with pure paint. I corrected a lot during the process. I added more brown and pinks to the cheeks and blended it in with a soft dry brush. For the rest of the body I used a similar technique where I mixed a semi-transparent shade of brown, again with lots of Lequin Original, which is a transparent oil painting medium. This helped me to get a transparent paint that wouldn't cover my watercolor base completely. I just wanted to tint it a bit and perfection it, but I didn't want to lose it. While I let the body and the face dry, I worked on the cottage and darkened the shadows. Watercolor never gets as dark as oils and with the additional primer on top of it, it got even lighter. So I had to work on the darker parts again while leaving the midtones and highlights untouched. The fun part for me was to add tiny little parts of moss and plant stuff on the roof and around the little cottage. It looked so whimsical already and I really started loving the mood and the painting. Then the face dried and I could apply a second layer of paint. I added some accents of pink, turquoise and purple because I didn't like the grayness of the skin tones. Then I focused on the peony, the moth and the glowing fireflies around the figure. When I paint flowers like peonies I place lighter petals onto the shadows. So I have to start with the dark pink for the shadows and then place the lighter petals on top. This way they blend beautiful into the shadows and create a realistic impression without much effort. It's important to follow the direction of every petal in order to get the desired effect. Everything dried, I could finally add my beloved abstract washes. In the beginning phase of the painting, I was so excited about the details in the composition that I forgot to add the washes, so I had to add them in the end. I loved how they changed the painting and how they gave it a more surreal look. As much as I love realistic art, I even more adore it when a painting reveals to the viewer that it is indeed painted and not a mere copy of a photograph. So for me, this painting really satisfies my artistic spirits a lot. Now, up in my apartment, while I write the script of this video, I keep looking at it and enjoy how happy it makes me. That's it for today's painting tutorial. I hope it was helpful in one or another way, even if you don't combine watercolors with oils. 
In fact, it's not necessary. For me, it is exciting because I can combine the best of my two favorite mediums, but it really depends on your own style and your level of experience and what you feel comfortable with. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe to my channel or support me on Patreon if you like my videos and want to see more of them. See you in the next video. Bye bye!